Goeiedag. Mijn naam is Luc Sala en dit is Mister. Zoals u misschien gemerkt heeft, hebben we een hele serie gesprekken over het millennium. De volgende eeuw, de eeuwwende, de 21ste eeuw. Hoe je het maar noemen wilt, eind 1999 is er een belangrijke stap. Een angstige stap, want er wordt gesproken over de millennium bug, over de computers die het niet meer doen. Maar ook een angstige stap om andere redenen. Want, denken veel mensen, er gaat iets gebeuren. Dat is voorspeld door Nostradamus, door andere mensen. Maar er is altijd rond zo'n e-wende, maar vooral rond de millenniumwende, een gevoel van dit is een belangrijke stap. Er gaat iets heel fundamenteels veranderen. Daar praten we over met allerlei mensen die daar wat aan willen doen. Die plannen hebben voor drijvende eilanden, voor Euro-Aziatische bossen, voor andere muziek, voor andere manieren van bij elkaar zijn. Maar we gaan ook praten met mensen die kijken naar die cultuur. Peter Rubin is iemand die zich bezighoudt met subculturen. Hij is uh, een van de eerste VJ's geweest, de mensen die met video werkten. Hij heeft in Duitsland uh, de Mayday um, feesten, de disco scene, de housing. The love de Love Parade. The Love Parade. Allerlei activiteiten van subculturen. En hij is nu bezig met een boek over de komende eeuw, de 21ste eeuw, om het belang van die verschillende culturen bij elkaar te brengen, om te laten zien hoe dat allemaal in elkaar steekt. Zijn visie is dat we voor die komende eeuw een belangrijke verandering gaan zien. Welke hij ziet, gaan we met hem over praten. In het Engels. Peter, welkom. Thank you, Luke. Uh, let's start talking about the Love Parade. We had another one in, in Berlin. Uh, it's spreading all around the world. And this idea of, of trucks with uh, audio equipment, driving around town, hundreds of thousands of people following it. It's um, the procession, the, the spiritual, the religious procession of the past is now Love Parade. <laughs> um, it's not so much a joke, actually, uh, because if you think about the Love Parade, What you're talking about is a demonstration wherein you have between a million and a half and two million people every year walking down the streets of Berlin espousing peace and love within a technological environment. Now, where on the planet do you have such a demonstration which incorporates the basic ideals that have been developed over the last 50 years of subcultural development into an environment, into a technological environment, the whole house and techno subculture is based on the developments of techno technology, and the openness to have people join in. I mean, we are living in a time right now where more and more you see people excluding isolating themselves. Um, yeah, but this is, this is going against that. And the love parade is, is inclusive. The next generation, the, the next century, is a century in which the tradi traditional aspects of life which have been secularized and, and isolated for power purposes mm -hmm. are now all becoming integrated. And what the house and techno culture uh, represents is what the subculture represents in general. It's, I mean, this is a, an interesting analogy, but it's like the stock market. The, the prices that are on the stock market today reflect where the business community is going to be within nine to 12 months. The subculture has always reflected where the culture was going to be influenced a year, two, three years down the road. Is that true? But if that's true for the Love Parade, you know about Burning Man in the, in the States, in Nevada, where they uh, build all kinds of contraptions and, and uh, moving uh, fireworks and whatever. Um, it is, in a way, uh, some kind of a rainbow gathering. You know, people just go back to the old way of living. And the very modern uh, computers, fireworks, big explosions. Uh, it's called Burning Man. Um, 20,000 people go to the Nevada desert, maybe 30,000. A similar idea as this love parade? Um, I think where we have to go right now is back to the basics. Uh, what is the love parade? 
Where does it come from? Where, where is our society right now to produce such a phenomenon as such phenomena as the Love Parade or yeah, or the Kwaku Festival in Amsterdam or, or the, this or, or that, the, or that. The, okay. the gay parade with boats. There is something about expressing Absolutely. subculture or it's as if, as you say, it's about to become part of the mainstream culture. That's, that's, that's true. And now what you have to say is what is about to become part of the mainstream culture. Techno, as a musical form, is not about to become part of the mainstream culture. What is about to become part of the, the mainstream culture is the structural reality of this particular movement when included in a wider structural reality, which is to say the development of the subculture since, since the end of the Second World War. It's a progression, it's a widening progression of new structural realities created by a technological environment. Now, okay, that, that sounds a that's, little heavy. That, that sounds, sounds a little heavy. heavy. Okay. Let's sounds, explain. It is. It, it is very... It, Why, okay. Let's take the reality. You say it's a new reality. Okay. Now, reality what evolves. is going on right now on the planet is the greatest revolution in the planet's history. Um, the, the, the nature of this revolution is a structural revolution. Now, what I mean by that is this. Up until the middle part of the 20th, 20th century, for the last 10,000 years, for the entire scope of human civilization, there has been one basic structural hierarchical foundation that every single culture has followed in the last 10,000 years. And that foundation rests upon central power and control. Central power? Central power and control. Central. Central, which means from the individual ego, my central power, I decide my activities. Mother, father, teacher, boss, religious leader, politician, dictator. Our entire history of human civilization has been developed upon the, the, the reality that you had central power figures determining the activities of everybody else. Otherwise, you would have chaos, or not? That was always the reason that that reality was originally structured. Now, but well, I go one step further. Okay, we've seen um, when the Roman em Empire collapsed, or a big in, in Germany when the, the whole thing collapsed after the First World War. Out of the chaos came a new leader, a new strong. Go backwards thousands of years. It's always go, the same pattern. It's always the same pattern. So you're saying that's changing? We can do without the Clintons, we can do without uh, the Hitlers, we can do without the Stalins? The way it works is like this. Throughout all of history, that central power structure was created to serve self-serving needs. So that to those, serve the ruling class. Those in power, whether it was the ruling class, whether it was your teacher who wanted to have control over the students, whether it was your mother who wanted to have control over the family, whether it was whatever. We have always, as a human civilization, determined our actions in a basic structural power pattern of central power and control. Now that central power and control always has been structured so that the, 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 the power exploits the mass, influences, it, influences the mass, yeah, but yeah. always but in the... So said, so said Marx, and he said that structure will co collapse in itself. And, he and said it, it is. Well, Now I'll it. tell you how it is. Well, the alternative he built up didn't work either. Absolutely, because that was still based on industrial at that point, because the height of this entire structure ends in the Industrial Revolution. And what's happening is that because of new structural realities, that entire pattern is changing so that instead of the individual, power is changing. The basic phenomenon, the most important phenomenon that's going on on the planet today is the changing relationship of power. Power right now is being determined by the global mass. The people who are in positions of power today do not decide what is going to happen with the mass. 
The people in power today, your politicians, your businessmen, are all technocrats. What they do is they take the realities of the global situation and try to manage them in a way that at this point in time doesn't even serve their own needs, but has to serve the public's needs so they can just stay alive. They can survive. The most powerful man on the planet today is Bill Gates. He's the richest person on the planet. He's got He's got his fingers into more things than anybody on the planet. He is hanging on by his fingernails for survival. He doesn't know where he's going to be in five years. Well, he is working his tail off 24 hours a day. And the reason he is working that hard is that he knows if he doesn't work that hard, his whole thing could collapse in six months. Now, traditional power, when they had more power than anybody else in the world, did not worry about what's going to happen three years from now, and if I'm going to this, I'm going to fall flat on my face. The reason is because the power is becoming decentralized so that more and more people with more and more education and more and more opportunity and more and more technological interactivity are creating a whole new power force that's, 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 that's exerting itself on the planet. It's a decentralized power force where the power comes from the overall structure. Sounds great, Peter. Right. It sounds like you're a utopist in the Rousseau tradition, except in those days that right. go back to nature, you say, hey, let's use these computers, this communication, whatever, let's build a new society. But isn't it a utopia, something that's a dream? No, it's, it's okay. What you're talking about, utopians again, I mean, you, you know, love it's a dream, eh? It's a dream. It's a one and a the, half million people. The love parade is a function of the present reality. What the present reality is saying is that the only way this planet is going to survive, the only way this planet is going to survive, is that more and more people are able to deal with their individual realities and individual problems because there's no one person. There's no one super organization that is able to solve global problems. The only way the global problems are going to be solved is by the interaction of all the different areas and individuals and groups on the, on the planet. I mean, China cannot bomb the United States anymore because if China bombs the United States, their economy goes down the, the drain. Everybody is so interdependent on everybody else that the traditional power structures Didn't in work. which do not work. But take Bill Gates. He's very powerful. We just heard that his Windows 98 out, what is it, a month, has a millennium bug. Maybe it's not very serious. We can fix it. But the mere fact, these guys have been working on it since three years, four years, five years, whatever. They knew there was a millennium bug. They knew it had to be millennium bug free. And it still is. Well, okay. I would say, I wouldn't say hang the guy, but I mean, this is serious. The richest guy in the world, one of the most powerful companies in the world, Microsoft, cannot deliver on a simple thing that has to be millennium proof. There's Jesus, a, there's that a, makes you there's, fear that all those... There's a rule, there's a rule that I, that, that's in my book, which says that industrial mentality cannot manipulate electronic reality. In other words, what is, we're in a transition right now. I mean, you've got 10,000 years of human civilization over there, and then all of a sudden you've got the microelectronic revolution. You know, and just because one year, two years, four years goes by and there's a lot of problems, we're talking about changing the entire planet. It, it's, it, we're, as everybody has said, we're in a transition period. Now, I want to get back to this whole thing with structure because what what, we're talk what you're talking about with Microsoft, again, is manipulation, is, is, is a central power figure trying to get his particular product out to a wide number of people. In other words, he is determining what should happen to the people. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that there is a natural force that's occurring all across the planet, which is totally counter to this particular model of centralized behavior which has always been our tradition. Now that new model started 
in the early 50s with the development of the post-Second World War subcultural phenomenon. That has included first the beat generation, then the hippies, then the punks, then house and techno culture, and now the internet culture. This is one straight line, and I'll show you how I can prove this. This is one straight line which is developing an entirely new culture to be able to adapt to the new technological conditions. Okay, tell me, how does Ginsburg relate to internet? Okay. He was, well, he, he it was... It started out, it started out as a, as a very small grouping of individuals at the end of the Second World War who felt an energy. That energy they felt was an energy which said, we reject going back to the industrial society that has been that had been established before the wars and now after the wars is being solidified so that basically the society at that point cared about the remobilizing of the industrialized society via the fear of war and all that kind of stuff. And a, a small grouping of people called the Beat Generation felt that there was another way. They felt an energy. And then, and with Just to the, make clear, the Beat Generation were the poets that we know as Ellen okay. Ginsberg. And, yeah, uh, the Beat Generation uh, started in the, in, the mid, in the mid 40s to, to, to the mid 50s, they had their, their, their high point. And their, their god was Jack Kerouac. And the Bible of the Beats was a book called On the Road. Now, what On the Road is all about is traveling, is, the energy, is going out of the old structures because they felt something. They didn't know what it was, but they felt an energy. And they started going back and forth across the United States. Yeah, but that wasn't that, uh, wait a moment, I disagree. Yeah. When I wrote, yeah. read those books. I mean, I was I, a beat. I was, yeah, I was, I, I was, I was part was. of the beat. Yeah, right. But when I read those books, and I was in California, traveling up and down the coast reading, what is it, Dharma Bums? Whatever. Yeah? Um, I felt that these people were tapping in a much older generation and Ginsburg was doing in the Buddhist tradition where it would say, you know, let go of material connections, disengage from society, right. do your own thing, right. buff. Right. And but that's very old. I mean, that was... I'm not saying that they didn't have tradition. I mean, they, they were not cyborgs that appeared out of nowhere. And when I say they were rebelling against the, the, the industrial in, practices in order to rebel, you have to have some sort of awareness that there might be something else to rebel from. I mean, to have the, the, the inspiration to do that. Now, one of the things was that, and this is just this is the beginning of this whole technological restructuring of the subculture. Um, one of the interesting things about that particular generation was the, net, the, the, the extent of the network of influences. They were already being inspired and, and directed, not by, in this case, American structures, but they were breaking through American structures and getting their influences in a global environment, from a global mm -hmm. environment. So what happened is they started traveling. And where the hippies came from mm -hmm. was the tradition of the beats who had traveled with, with, with a certain kind of energy. The beat, the, the, the term beat generation, by the way, comes from the beat of, of the poetry and the beat of the music. Um, they were, the beats were, the, the general society turned them beatniks. And beatnik, in that definition, referred to being beaten, that these were lost souls that only cared about sex and drugs. And, um, but there was they, a rhythm. They did the more, the more other things. I mean, there's a difference between involving yourself in sexual relationships to find out who, who you are and drugs to find out who you are. Then wait, what wait, wait, the wait, perception... But, yeah, yeah, Peter, you, yeah. you, Go ahead. sounds like you're making cultural heroes and far-sighted people out of the beat generation, and for that matter, the, the people that started the techno and, and Leary and that whole string of, of you know, we, we come I don't, I don't I'm not talking about the individual heroes. I am talking about the movement. I'm talking about the energy of a movement 
which emerged after the Second World War from an industrial structure, an industrial centralized structure. The beats had no centralized structure. There was no individual deciding where everybody should go. It was a highly fluid movement which had a network of, of influences that went far beyond what the traditional influences were in American culture at that time. And when they expanded, they expanded at a time of, I mean, okay, they expanded at a time of the next great technological um, reality which happened, which was rock and roll. Now, which was electronics in music. No. Rock and roll, the significance of rock and roll is not so much the fact that they were playing electric instruments. The significance of rock and roll was the nature of the structure of rock and roll, where it got its influences from. Rock and roll was a combination of rhythm and blues from, from the big city ghettos, um, gospel, um, southern folk blues from, and, uh, from, from all of the black communities in the South, uh, hills music uh, from Kentucky and Tennessee, uh, country music from Texas, um, the Beach Boys, California surf music, the, 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 the real legacy of rock and roll is that it synthesized an entire nation of, of very disparate sections of young people into a very harmonious movement okay. that was fluid so that everybody was influencing okay, everybody say, else. Well, when you, when you yeah. described it, you could, if you're not talking about music, but from I'm talking about the internet, structure. it's I the same thing. Exactly. It's the same what you phenomenon. See, what you see is the development of a, a decentralized society happening within the confines of a highly centralized society. Now, each one of these subcultures has its own particular relation to the centralized society, which means that when the Beats were looking at the centralized society, they wanted out. That was the, 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 the primary force of the Beats was move, energy. And they felt, this is very important, because what we're talking about is energy. They felt a special energy. There was no centralization. They felt an energy. OK. When the hippies came along, because then it spread out huge, the hippies' function within the development of this was to challenge the establishment. That's what the Vietnam War struggles were all about. The hippies wanted to change established society. Again, we said. Internet is a force there. We, you said electronic music leading to rock. For the hippies, it was a psychedelic experience that kind of broke through all barriers. The psychedelics was a part of it. Uh, psychedelics was the um, another way to find out your own. You see, that each one of these subcultures finds its own way to individualize their experience with the technological reality. When House and Techno first started, House and Techno came right after that in-between period where everybody was looking like each other, John Travolta kind of thing, where everybody was doing the same steps and all this kind of thing, and it was totally a commercial sort of uh, onslaught onto young musical culture that, again, control, was trying to say, this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you're supposed to look like. This is what you're supposed to buy as far as discs totally and Totally commercial and, and all that. When house and techno first started, the original house and techno music was very slow. Boom. 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 And there may be one or two things going on in there. The individuals you're just, who had just been dancing. Just to remind us, um, yeah. where did it start? You say it started in Detroit? Or no, no, it started in Chicago. And it's very interesting. House comes from the fact that the, 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 the place that it started in was the warehouse in Chicago. Uh, there was another place, I forget the name of it, but it was also called the Something House. Now, both of these places, and this, is, this will work itself in, I don't know if we'll get to it here, but it's very important on a level that, that's structural, 
is that both of these places were gay clubs. Now, oppressed people are that much more concerned with their particular identities in a changing environment because they have to guard against themselves all the time. I mean, one of the things that, that men and women, that men don't realize about women, is that when a man walks down the street or does anything, they can do whatever they want. They don't have to worry about anything. They decide, blah, 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 they decide what they do. A woman, when she walks down the street, is never private. A woman has to be aware of attacks 24 hours a day as soon as she's out in public. So when you're an oppressed minority, you and, and the environment is changing, you are, are forced by just the natural activities of your life to focus in on very precise, specific activities that are affecting your life. Because if you don't, you're going to get slaughtered. And so what the psychedelic experience was to the hippie, which was who am I in this kind of a society, in this kind of a changing world, the, the initial dance movement in house and techno was a very, and again, this was a reaction to all of the John Travolta stuff where everybody's doing the same thing. In house and techno, everybody was individual on a floor. I mean, if, if you think trance music is trancy now, the original house and techno music was trance music from 5,000 years ago. And what that was, what each of these subcultures has to go through initially is finding out where my place is in this particular technological environment. It's, it's, you see, all these things are connected. Now, let me go back to where I was before. The Beats were looking to a whole new world. They were rebelling against the, the industrial restructuring. And they were looking for the hippies created developed this world and the language, this is where rock and roll, the language of, of, of the subculture was rock and roll. Now, what that means is it was an energy. We're talking about energies again. Um, just like the beats felt really secure with a decentralized energy. Um, what rock and roll provided, if you went to a, a Rolling Stones concert in 1960, whatever, um, and you didn't know anybody in the whole place. You walked into a, a space and you heard that music and immediately, without knowing anybody in that place, you felt and you knew that there were tremendous similarities in who you were and who they were. You identified with the music. And you identify with the energy. The music in all of these things whether it's rock and roll, whether it's punk, whether it's house and techno, is a vehicle. The music in itself, if the music is only the music, the music will die. The music is the language of a culture. And the only time the music really becomes significant is when it is able to take the, the, the reality of the culture and translate it into a new language which affects people, not the music. Mm -hmm. The music is secondary. What affects the people is the love parade. What affects the people is the actual representation of the ideology. Now, what happened with the, 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 the hippies was they felt because of their size, because of their ideology, uh, because of their idealism, that and they saw, they saw just like you see, just like everybody has always seen, the hypocrisy in it all. The whole thing with the power structure, everybody sees that. The planet is not stupid, they never were. They were never able to do anything against it. They never felt that they had the, the size. The, nobody ever represented the people because the structure of power is such that the people in power do not want to give the power to the people because it threatens their own power. So the hippies... That's Patty Smith, isn't it? That's, that's every the, single... The people have the power. That's, 
that's, that's oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, again, Patti Smith comes out of the subculture, and what this is all about. Lost at the beach. Yeah, yeah. What this is all about. What this progression is all about from the beats to, to, to rock and roll to the punks to house and techno the internet is the liberation of the people. The revolution that's going on planet Earth today is Sad. the fact that more and more people are getting more and more power and the people who have traditionally had the power see their power diminishing. And what this whole 50 year subcultural development has done is has created not only a confidence, but a way of functioning that is not chaotic. You say so. Yes, Take when, I say, that, when I say that the hippies yeah. had a period of whatever it was, 10 years, in which they developed and changed our society, civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, all of, this, the, all of the, the major social change that has come into our cultures since the end of the Second World War has come from the streets, has come from the people. It works itself. Is it true? I mean, you sound so that you, you see a line in history in the subcultures that you think matters. Now, look at the station we're presently at, which is the Digerati, the people that are part of the internet. Now, a few years ago, John Perry Barlow, who comes from the, the Grateful Dead, was a songwriter and a poet, had great connections with, with Ginsberg and all that. So he fall, he's kind of a line in that thing. A few uh, years ago, I said, well, the internet will be the new democracy and away with copyrights and stuff like that. And you, expect, and you expect in four years for it all to happen like that? Well, it didn't happen. The copyrights are back on the internet, and the internet okay. is for some people just, hey, it keeps the, it keeps the suckers happy. Okay. What you have here is the rock and roll generation decided to change society. They lost. Yeah. They got their ass. Because what was happening basically was they were trying to change a power structure and the power structure was much stronger than them. Exit hippies, exit ideology. Okay. The next part of the subculture, which is the punks, because the subculture is developing. It's, it's, it's got its own line. Mm -hmm. The punks, what are the punks, what, what was, what was the, 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 the fundamental aspect of the, the fundamental aspect of the punks was anarchy, was rejection against the, the establishment. We dress they, different, we are different, we... God fucked the queen. God fucked the queen became the number one hit in London without being broadcast on any London radio station. Why does that happen? Because there is an energy and a subculture, again, which recognizes the hypocrisy of the whole structure of industrialization, which realizes the fact that what it's all about is, is street reality, which is the people, and which, at that particular point, having, come, having been the, the next development after the fact that they tried to change society, but it didn't work, then the punk said, we reject society. They get smashed. Okay. Come to techno, guys. Okay, now what does a techno society do? Techno society's got a, a million different really important distinctions. I mean, it's the first totally technological form of popular music. It's the first global form of popular music. Um, rock and roll was an American phenomenon which spread out. Punk, I mean, even though rock and roll, uh, punk, you could say, started in the United States with the Ramones and, and the early CBGB's crowd, it basically came into prominence in, in, in England and has been identified as an English phenomenon which then spread itself outward. House and techno is a global form of popular music again. It is having its development. Yeah, yeah. yeah as you're saying, both in, in Chicago and in Germany oh, and, and in London. And, and in uh, Hong Kong and in, in yeah. Namibia. And, you know, they're all putting... So, I mean, again, what we're doing is we're going out into a a globalized form of influence, which, which, which is... But still, right. a few of the flag bearers of that, okay, okay, well, the techno movement came from... Let me, let me finish this. What the techno movement represents, because you've got a movement now which tried to overturn the, the society, the next movement said, forget the society. What the, the house and techno movement does is try to create its own society. What the love parade is all about, what the love parade represents, and what the house and techno community represent is a society 
which is creating its own rules and its own society because after the technological phenomena of rock and roll served the subculture and the subculture tried to use that until it was finally destroyed by the power structure, at that particular point, the next technological phenomena occurs, which is cyberspace. Now with cyberspace, the subculture now has a new way to develop a decentralized society that now is more and more global. And so as soon as cyberspace, you see, originally, when you had the internet culture over here and the, the house and techno culture over there, internet actually was established before house and techno culture came into being. However, house and techno culture as a phenomenon developed earlier in terms of its major influence and later the internet culture has further developed after that. So even though internet the internet was developed yes. before, the influence was, was house and techno culture. Now at that particular point of transition, when you had the internet culture emerging at the time that the house and techno culture was already there, you had these attitudes on both of the cultures. The house and techno culture looked at the, at the, the hackers as a bunch of weirdos with big glasses who stood in front of computers all day. The internet culture looked at the house and techno culture in the same way that the general culture looked at the house and techno culture. A bunch of dirty, um, sleazy, sleazy, you know, that idiots kind of stuff. taking pills and dancing. Exactly. Three years later, at the end of every single uh, major technological conference on the internet and, and interactivity, there was always a house and techno dance. It took a while for the two cultures to merge. But the reason that the internet culture accepted the house and techno culture and vice versa is because there was an awareness all of a sudden that the house and techno culture was incorporating these global concepts, rules, and successful demonstrations of how you could create your own global society an ever-growing global society via cyberspace. Now, where this comes into play, for example, is let's say we take some French disc jockeys. Now, there's not much action in France. There never has been. There, there's always, they've always <laughs> sort of secluded themselves. Wait a moment. <laughs> let's make clear okay. why you say it. Because you've been involved in the German May uh, what was it, the May Parade or the May, May Day, May the May Day, Day uh, yeah. parties? No, what I mean by that is I mean that the, the French bureaucracy, if you will, um, French conditioning, French culture, what have you, just like when you spoke about j rock and roll, in France they had Johnny Halliday. Um, when you speak about the house and techno movement, the, the forces within the French bureaucratic structure uh, did not allow very much at all to really occur. Now, you can do that in many ways, with, with, with fire licenses and, 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 and yeah, yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so what you've got in France is a fairly small um, house and techno yeah, subculture. Um, now, normally, under normal conditions, which is pre-industrial industrial conditions, pre-electronic conditions, um, you would basically have a tiny little movement that would dry up. The French house and techno crowd does not identify itself with the rules coming out of the French bureaucracy. In exactly the same way that none of the other cultures identify them. What, where their nation is, is in cyberspace. Where the house and techno nation comes together House and Techno is one of the, the largest sites on, on the internet. Is a culture which is a decentralized culture. There is no chaos. There was not chaos in the hippie development of, of, of civil rights. And, you know, there, it, was, it was a very, very um, predictable 
and, and an understandable development of a culture. Um, you can say the same thing about all these subcultures. There is no central organization. But what happens when you don't have a central organization is that the people, the individuals, because they're not being exploited, because they're not being manipulated, have a sense of participation and freedom and joy of activity because they are being more and more empowered themselves. And this then branches out, and where the internet is so significant, is that after 40 years of specialized, limited experiments mm -hmm. in decentralized living, what happens now is the internet opens up where the whole world is, and now because the internet itself is a totally decentralized structure. And what happens in, okay, you got your problems. You got your problems with your copyrights, you got your problems yeah. with this, right, right? What is really happening? Millions of people all over the planet feel much more empowered. The whole thing of what they call a prosumer, which is the, the combination of a producer and a consumer. There's, there's much more of an independent feeling of empowerment than has ever well, been before. But and this comes from the fact, this is, I cannot stress this more than that. It comes from the fact that they are not being exploited. They are not being told what to do. They are doing what they want to do. And this is the key. Because if we are going to solve the problems mm -hmm. in the 21st century, the only way we're going to do it is if everybody works harder than they have worked before. Now, when you say that, everybody says, oh my God, I don't want to work, right? Mother Teresa, right? Did she ever want to retire? Einstein, did Einstein ever want to retire? Picasso, did Picasso ever want to retire? No, why? Because these people were involved in something that they really wanted to do. And when you are involved in something you really want to do, and then you start combining the energies and you see the spins and everybody says, I want to help you because they're doing what you want to do. What happens is you work. You, you, there's an energy that's developed, which, as far as I'm concerned, can do a hell of a lot more than the planet's ever done before and can get the enthusiasm and the energy because people are doing what they want to do rather than people doing what power structures have always wanted them to do so that they had to serve somebody else. Okay, but so we have a string of subcultures, ranging from the beats, whatever, yeah, coming up to the digerati, the people that are on the internet, they feel empowered, more power. So what is this? So where, why, yeah, what well, is it? first, is there's two yeah. questions. In the next millennium, will this trend go on? and what new things will we see? Secondly, maybe the existing powers will say, hey, you've had enough of this. We will, we will forbid traffic, international traffic over the internet. We'll forbid this and that and that, and we'll just... You can't do that. You can't do that because they depend on their survival. It's the same way as China's not gonna drop a bomb on the United States because their economy is gonna go down. The power structure, which is decentralizing itself, creates the natural conditions because of the interdependencies that people cannot decide what happens because it's too diffuse and they do not have central power. When George Bush... Yeah, but that's, that's very, you know, you see, you see this as a great future in a way. Okay. Is, but if I am nearing 65 and the year 2000 comes around and I see a future whereby there is no central power, which means I have to take care of my own on a certain level, right. that there is no um, like socialist system where I get the money from the government, where I have to take care of my own needs. Luke, Jesus, you are it, doing it right now by making this television program. Yeah, but I understand. You are working harder right now. How old are you? Oh, by 48. the way, uh, oh, by the way, by the way, Ready? Yeah. Your birthday and my birthday are on the same birthday. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Okay. 
You are working at the age of 48 right now, harder than you've ever worked in your life. You are 24 hours a day working on this television program. Yeah, because you I have a vision because right, your subculture, right, right, right. You, you know, did, but yeah, but you want to do it. You know, I see the same line as you see, but I see, for me, internet is already dead. It's been stamped out. It's become a, a useless tool for people to keep them busy. There has no real value. That's, that's, what I see, yeah. what I see is the next stage is what I call micromedia, is that the same electronics that before have empowered the beat generation and the rock and roll and the techno and house culture and the internet will, in the next five or ten years, empower people to take the media in their own hands, to okay. do away with centralized media because we get much more bandwidth. So I see a next stage. That's th what but you're saying is what I just said. Oh, no, that's great. I don't... The question Where, is, what, what will what, the people do? What is it? What is it? Well, let that, me that's the question. The question is, what is it? What is it going to do to the people? What is it going to do to our society? Yeah, but then, then we come to a very practical question. Uh, and uh, uh, let's yeah. give an example. Maybe I give too many examples. No, but no, 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 we no. were at a, no. uh, what we call a rainbow gathering. You know, okay. this, in the States, there's 20, 30,000 people coming together and they have a, uh, a rule that says uh, there are no leaders, there's no nothing. There's this total power to the people. Everybody sits in the circle and decides. There's a few issues that come up on each of these rainbow meetings, which is media. Do we allow cameras or not? So we were there, there was a rainbow gathering in Holland and we were there with a camera. And we get a very nasty discussion of the purist, fundamentalist who say no cameras and the others say, yeah, wait a moment, we live in the, nearly in the next century, hmm. cameras are all over the place, why stop this? So even in this pastoral utopian movement called the rainbow, yeah? Right. You have this you power struggle about, between people that want the power. You keep based talking on the book. about utopia, and I keep talking about reality. Yeah, but their reality, the reality is, still is the reality is that we are living in a time. Okay, we are living in a time of fluidity. Uh, one of the characteristics, one of the the, the major characteristic differences of uh, an industrial and a pre-industrial society and the microelectronic society which we're in right now is this whole notion of fixed ideas, fixed activity contra fluid ideas and fluid activity. Um, and this, okay, the two major structural uh, factors that, 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 are, that are influencing us today is one, decentralization, and two, multiplicity. These are factors that have come about as a result of combination of the atomic age and the microelectronic revolution. Um, prior to the microelectronic age, what power structures structured their entire modus operandi, if you will, around, is arithmetic formulas, which is to say, um, I have a problem, and I have to solve this problem, so I will do this to solve that problem. One, thinking, one plus yes. one equals two. Yes. If, if, I, if, if, I've got 60, if I'm an automobile maker and I've got 60,000 people who want to buy automobiles, I, buy, I produce 60,000 automobiles, and I make my predictable profit. It's a one plus one equals two. And that means we're talking about fixed ideas. In an electronic reality, you're dealing in multiplicity. The first time I ever met you, I gave a talk about multiplicity. Um, at the New Edge Conference, 93 in Amsterdam. In, in 93, I was New talking Edge. about multiplicity then. Um, multiplicity basically is interdependence. This. It is only not, not only in terms of product dispersal, but it's also in behavior. Now, what I mean by that is this. Um, if I go to a house and techno organization because I want to have a show, I will go to the organization. Now, that organization, which in an industrial time, would be an organization to produce events and hire people, right now is not only an organization to do that, but it's got an agency for the disc jockeys because it needs those disc jockeys. Downstairs, there is a soft uh, 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 merchandising. They make t-shirts, whatever. T-shirts and all that kind of thing. 
upstairs, there's a record company. So what happens is... They have is, a website, whatever. Right, so the nature of multiplicity, which is very, very important, um, is not only showing itself in the fabric of distribution, but it's showing itself in the fabric of human behavior. Now that particular phenomenon is not a fixed phenomenon because of all the spins. It's a fluid phenomenon. It's a, it's a phenomenon, just like rock and roll was a phenomenon, which was a fluid network of styles, which then created its own identity. That's what's going on today. Okay. And the reality of the conflict... Yeah, yeah but go back to your car manufacturer. Yeah, okay. So in the old days, you would say... There were Ford rules. would say, we need 60,000 cars, there's so many steel. Right. You say, in the future, in the next century, we might say, we need... 60,000 cars. No, we don't need 60,000 cars. We have 60,000 people that have needs for transport and meeting and going from one place to another. Let's look at the whole thing. Maybe some people can share cars. We can have buses, trams. We can build larger cars or smaller cars or right. we'll give them bikes or put them on rockets, whatever. But look at that need of those 60,000 right, people. You're asking them what they want rather than telling them what they want. Or let want. them decide whether they want right. a bike or whatever instead of forcing them to Ford automobile. Hit, hit and then car. also... Not only that, but they are deciding how they want to get those cars. You see, again, okay, now we go to another part of the structural. We are talking about a structural revolution. And, okay, now we pull back. What is a structural revolution? What, what, what does all this mean? What we are talking about right now is a phenomenon that's happening on the planet, which nobody on the planet controls. There is, thank you. There is no one individual country, this, that, or the other, that's saying this is what's happening. It's impossible. What we are talking about right now are systems. Everybody on this planet today is being influenced by a structural change in the system that we are living on the planet. Now, what does that mean? A structural systematic change. Wait a moment. Explain that. It means that for the first time in history, we have to start looking to patterns of behavior that are being determined by universal behavior and learn how those new relationships are affecting our lives. Now, the way they're affecting our lives, like I said, is decentralization. And within this entire context, There are very specific ways of working with the new laws that will become efficient, progressive, and helpful. And then there are ways that if you work along previous patterns of behavior, which is industrial behavior, you will wind up with reactionary progress, you will wind up with a waste of time, and you will wind up Ironically, with the chaos that you, you predicted if we were going to follow a decentralized structure. So you say the old central power-based industrial system has to give way, and maybe in a period of 30 or 40 years, to the microelectronics, the, 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 the age where individual, peop individual people will have more power, there will be a multiplicity in everything, in forms, in media, in all those things. And we have to reckon with the fact that for the first time in history, we are not, well, the Earth is no longer controlling us with the it weather. It never was. Well, it never was. But we are, in mm -hmm. fact, controlling the Earth by polluting it, by, by making changes so that the weather changes or what? No, 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 no. We, are, we have always thought that we determined what was going to happen with planet Earth. What I'm saying right now is that planet, we have joined a new system which is not just us and planet Earth. But we have joined a new system, which is a wider system of the universe. And that what we have to start dealing with right now is understanding how universal laws can be translated into daily life and behavior, which is what decentralization is all about, so that we can then proceed through the 21st century in a much more efficient manner than if we stuck to 
industrial models which were based on total control within the earth. We've always placed ourselves in some hyper position that we can control everything in the universe, in our universe, in our society. It doesn't work like that. The more we are learning right now, the more we realize how much more knowledge is out there to learn. And when you build foundations on incomplete knowledge, your, your are reality... Are you implying that progress is not really there? That all this industrialization peaked out or is going to peak out and that we don't need that knowledge anymore? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's, that's, that's not me. I mean, from Alvin Toffler down, I mean, the, the most obvious, one of the most obvious things on the planet today is that all the rules of industrialization, which is based on central power exploitation and control, are going through this fantastic transition period in which it's all becoming decentralized. Now, well, that, that offers opportunities it offers opportunities for individuals all across the planet to have more self-empowerment than ever in history. If you have that plus all of the, the technological realities of interaction and interdependency, you've got the potential for amassing an enormous amount of power in a way that is individual all over the globe that will serve the globe. The, one of the, the paradoxes of the new reality is that it places the individual at the center of all power without the problem of the individual dominating the whole. Because you're working with equal individuals interdependent. Now that, that is a fundamental law of universal structure. We don't have some academics telling us what to do. This is happening to us. Just like that the earth turns and we have days and nights. And instead of being afraid of this, because like I said, this is happening naturally, the internet is doing this to people, we just have to understand the new phenomena, understand how that relates to the old phenomena in terms of behavior as well as substance. And the more we can understand specifically how that relates to each one of our lives, the, the, the better possibilities we have for a creative future. And that's what the book is all about. Yes, because you're writing a book about is the, the role of the subculture in, in, this, in this transition from... I'm, no, no, the, not the role. The role of the subculture in this transition is one paragraph. I, I'm, I'm sorry, one chapter. Uh, what, 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 what I am writing about is how as a result of this particular point in our technological history, our future depends on facing these new technological realities and the, the, more, the, the, the more quickly and the more precise we're able to analyze the new realities, the more will we, will we be able to create the living structures that will feed and grow with this reality. This is what the house and techno movement and the other movements and the internet movement is all about. It's allowing it to grow and feed. Whereas if we fight it, and then you get into your little transitory things, which is like your copyrights and all this. Uh -huh. If you fight the new energies, you're not only going to have useless conflict, you're not, it's going to waste time. So it's very important to realize that there are a great multidisciplinary activities is, is the next for our future. We have to ha have a knowledge of science and economics and human behavior and psychology and understand where the, the relationship between China and the subculture is. This is a very complicated world we're going into, but there are lines like the internet, like the subcultures, which naturally allow for that integration to fall into um, a creative way of living. And we just have to learn how we can look at these universal structures, how we can look at the structures that are, are determining our behavior on the planet, and um, then try to put our energies 
okay. and focus so that we can have a better future. Okay, a better future, that is what uh, Peter Rubin sees. He's writing a book about it, and this was a conversation in our series about the millennium. Thank you, Peter. You're certainly welcome. Thank you.